Hi everybody. So one of the curious things about motion is it's relative. And one of the best places to show that is on the train station. Of course, when we're on the station, it's the train that comes towards us. And of course, when we're on the train, it's the station that moves towards us. What's moving depends on your point of view. But actually, it's more than your point of view. It's actually called frame of reference because this is a physical, real-world effect. It's why when I'm in a car and I throw something up, it comes back down instead of shooting to hit the back windscreen because it moves within that frame of reference. And the same is true of wind turbines. I can either take them to the top of a hill where there is some wind and let that wind blow over them, or I can take it to somewhere where there isn't wind and move the turbine. Either way, the rotor and the stator are going to see the same force applied to them. And that's because the force applied is relative to the framework that it operates in, which is in part what relativity is all about. So all of that came to mind because a friend of mine, Coach Gio, pointed this out to me. Now, I love the concept. It's a little bit wacky and I can ask the question, why not just use the hand crank generator? But I did love it because it's a turbine that will work even when the wind isn't blowing. You basically swing it around your head and use relativity. I thought that was so cool. But when I looked at it, I thought there were a couple of things that I wouldn't have done that way that seemed to me to be vulnerabilities. And because I don't like to criticise people, but what I like to do is if I think I'll do it differently, well, I just do it differently. And that was the inspiration for this. I'm thinking about attaching a string in that hole at the bottom, which is provided, and swinging that around and seeing what it gets. Because one of the things I didn't like about the um, other turbine was those blades seemed a little bit vulnerable to me. And another thing that I thought was a little bit of a vulnerability was the chap was swinging it around from the connection leads. And I never like to swing things on a bit of wire. Nah, I don't know why. It's just one of those unreasonable things. I think I might break the wire. Either way, I wanted to do changes to it to, to suit the way I thought about it rather than the way the chap was thinking about it. So I'm not saying this is better, it's different to suit what I think rather than a direct copy of what that chap did. So the idea of this is obviously to tie it to a string and whiz it around. But then of course I've got to collect the energy somehow because here's my generator wires, just two wires. So what I need to do is stick on a uh, rectifier bridge and then a voltage regulator and some kind of energy storage device. Something like this is stunningly easy to use. So to help me do this, I've got a power supply set at ton 10 volts and I've got a multimeter that's reading the DC voltage. Because you're going to muck around with these, you should already have a power supply and a multimeter. If you don't, you probably need to get one. I've also got a very tiny screwdriver and I've connected this up. And I know which is in and out because it tells me which is in and out. And I know which is plus and minus because it says plus and minus. So you connect the out to your voltmeter so you can read the out and you connect your in to your power supply so you can give it the voltage that you want to give it. And this voltage will vary in your actual application, but when you're doing the setting, you do the setting by using a stable supply. Okay, so it's reading 9.46, and that's because of the setting of uh, the factory. Now we're going to twiddle this knob on the top. There's a little brass screw right there, and pop a little screwdriver in and give that a turn and watch the voltage. So it's clockwise to increase the voltage setting and anti-clockwise to decrease it and that is the voltage out. So the voltage out will be stabilised at the setting you just put. And it doesn't matter if this changes its voltage, so let's say 15 volts. And we still get 5 volts out. So that's how easy something like that is to use. And all we do is we solder it in. And of course it's plus to plus, minus to minus. So on your rectifier you'll have a plus out. And that goes to the plus in on the voltage regulator. On your rectifier you'll have a minus out. And that goes to the minus in on your voltage regulator. Then your plus out and minus out will be the bits that you're going to take to whatever application you want, like a battery charger, a phone charger, something like that. 
Now we're going to use this, which is a 100 farad supercapacitor at 2.7 volts. Quite honestly, because it'll charge quickly. But you can use a battery, in which case you'd set your voltage regulator at 3.7 volts, or you can use a USB out, in which case you'd set your regulator at 5 volts. Whatever it is, that regulator can be set. We're going to set this to 2.7, so we get a voltage regulation charging this, and that's what we're going to charge up by spinning this above our heads. So let's solder this in place, and it solders in place on the out, plus to plus, minus to minus. The idea is to swing it around, collect the energy, and when you've got the energy, use it to do something like charge a phone. And when you've charged your phone a bit, swing it around some more, and so on. So I want it all in one unit, where I can put a sturdy bit of string or rope on here and not worry about that electrical connection. Then equally, because it's a ball shape, I don't have to worry about shattering the blades. Okay, so we've got our supercapacitor strapped to the side. We've got our electronics in that little box. Now that box was a little bit too small, so I had to make it larger. I have updated the Thingiverse file on that though, so that's all done. Now we can charge this supercapacitor because we set the voltage regulator at 2.7 volts and there's only one supercapacitor, so no problem at all. If you want to do something different, like a battery for instance, then you would need a battery control circuit. But that comes after the voltage regulator and of course you can just buy them at Amazon for pennies, so not really a worry. I've also tied a bit of string to the bottom and I'm going to step back and swing it over my head and see if we can get some charge out of this. Now I have to say, I'm not 100% confident, but let's give it a go. see if it's working but I can hear it whirring a little bit so we're going to give it about five minutes and see if we can get some charge in there. <laughs> okay I'm not sure I did five minutes uh, a couple of minutes certainly we took the capacitor up to 2.3 volts so for 100 farads that's not bad at all and it is lighting this LED I'm not sure if you can see that in the studio lights because it is a bit dim but it is collecting and storing that energy. Now, I loved the concept, but I'm not quite sure why you wouldn't just use a hand crank generator. It was a lot of fun to make and try, and in deference to the guy, here's the link to his Kickstarter campaign in case you want to support what it is that he's doing, but I have no affiliation or association with the chap. It was just that Coach Dio put me in touch with it and I thought it was an awesome concept and that's why we built this to explore that concept because this seems to work much better when the wind is blowing over it and it's certainly far less effort and if there isn't any wind well you know it does make me think of putting a gear on here maybe so that you could attach it to a hand crank mechanism so it could be hand cranked or wind blown but chucking it around your head on a bit of string i'm not 100 sure about that but it does actually work. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.